because the reef has experienced three bleaching events in the last five years, we know that it's been quite severely damaged in a number of places. Tourist boats, fishing vessels, snorkelers and divers are being invited to upload images of the Great Barrier Reef for a world first census. Joining us now is Professor Peter Mumby from the University of Queensland. Peter, you came up with this idea. Talk us through it. Well, I came up with that idea both with one of the directors of the Great Marine Barrier Marine Park Authority, Roger Beedon and Andy Ridley for Citizens. And it was a sort of uh, three things came together at once. Um, citizens were looking for some uh, genuine and legitimate projects for citizen scientists to engage in. Um, and Roger and I were talking about the need to get large scale reconnaissance data on the state of the reef, particularly in terms of how it's recovering and which areas of the reef are most important for recovery. And so it was a, uh, you know, an easy solution was to try and hook up that idea with citizens um, particularly because the sort of information that's required is really straightforward and well within the capability of, of anyone who has a camera in their hand. Okay, so who's going to be involved in, in this research? Yeah, so in collecting the data, there'll be a lot of people, um, citizens, divers, snorkelers, uh, recreational fishers. Mostly people are going out with uh, uh, tourism boats and a lot of the operators have been very generous with their time in their boats to contribute to this, which is fantastic. And so whilst there'll be a lot of people involved in actually collecting photographs on the reef, there'll be even more people, we hope, involved, uh, you know, from all over the world then being able to access the photographs and help process them and sort of uh, digitize what they're seeing in the photographs. It's fairly simple to do. And that information then contributes to uh, the database that we're collecting. I'd imagine there's a lot of people sitting at home thinking that they've got images of the Great Barrier Reef on their GoPro. Should they send those in? How does it work? Well, the way that we're, we're uh, organising this is that if you go to the Citizens of the Barrier Reef website, there's instructions there on, on where to go, how to get involved. Uh, and for most people, it would be a case of going out either in their own boat, if they're fortunate enough to have one, or joining an existing uh, trip to the reef. And if you've got a GoPro, then it's a case of just going snorkeling and taking about a dozen or so seascape level images to really capture what the reef is looking like. Um, you then take a GPS position, which you can also get on your phone, and then you go to an upload portal and upload the information. You can then access how to process it and other people can join in with that part of it too. It's a fantastic idea. Why hasn't this been done sooner? Yeah, I don't know. I guess in part, I mean, the citizen science is very active. There's a whole series of really good citizen science programs on the reef in Australia. There's you know, a Reef Life Survey, Reef Check, for example, there's Eye on the Reef, which uses a lot of people. And they each have different objectives. And the point of census is it's complementary to all of these things, and it occurs just periodically, but it's the simplest. It's just trying to get this large scale reconnaissance. And, you know, to to look after a reef, you need various types of information. On the one hand, you want detailed scientific information on the state, which is the monitoring of the reef, and that's done mostly by scientists, but also by some of the more sophisticated citizens' programs. But then to get this large-scale reconnaissance information, that's really in the preserve of, of anybody. Um, so that's why we're doing it now. And I guess the other reason is because the reef has experienced three bleaching events in the last five years. We know that it's been quite severely damaged in a number of places. And yet there are still other areas that are really in good health. And the point of this is to find which reefs are the most important at driving the recovery that's already started. But you want to try to facilitate that. And you might ask, well, how does that work? Well, in about a month and a half's time, corals right across the Great Barrier Reef are going to have their annual reproductive spawning event, you know, one of those great uh, wonders of nature. And we know from previous studies, we have some information about where those fertilized eggs are going to move to and help replant and reseed reefs and help them recover. So a reef that's really important would have a number of characteristics. It would have a pretty good state now so that when it reproduces in a month's time, there's plenty of eggs. 
but also they're in a location where those eggs can reach many reefs in need of recovery. And that's what the census is about. It's about finding which of the reefs that are still looking good, which of the reefs that are in need, and then matching them up to identify which ones are currently the most important. And that is information that is then passed on to the Marine Park Authority who are partners in this. And how do you revive those areas? Well, in some cases, it's not really about reviving them necessarily. Um, it's more about knowing that these are the areas right now that are especially important. So that might mean the, the authority can then decide you know, how well protected are they at present. I mean, if they're already in a, in a green zone, in a fishing zone, well, that's a good start. In some areas where you might find some really critical reefs, then you might consider things like uh, including them in the crown of thorn starfish control programs so that the corals that are there are at least protected from some of the other problems that they might face. So there's a variety of things that, that the authority could consider, but it's the first thing is to get the information on where those reefs are and, and uh, how well sort of protected they are at this stage. Um, and just finally, I know we've heard before that the, the reef is dead. You're saying lots of areas there are very much alive. Do we know um, what percentage of the reef is actually damaged and um, yeah, which, which isn't? Yeah, we have pretty good intel on which areas are damaged. I mean, there's certainly some areas in the north and central that are damaged. It's quite patchy if you go further south. Um, but, you know, even those damaged areas are starting to recover. And some of the areas that were really severely hit, you know, we see quite um, good positive signs of recovery. And the main thing here is to try to just facilitate that recovery process. Because there's not much you can do to stop a coral bleaching event. In fact, there's nothing you can do right now. But what you can do is help the process of recovery. And that's what this is really all about. Well, thank you so much for your time, Professor, and good luck with your research. Thank you. You're welcome.